Hey everybody. So I wanted to talk a little bit about inquiry. Now inquiry is a big buzzword in science community and a lot of teachers say, oh, well, you know, I use inquiry a lot of my classes or you might be asking a job interview if you're going to be a science teacher. How do you use inquiry? What what does inquiry mean to you? And so it's one of those things that has a lot of different definitions for a lot of different people and depending on how you look at it. So I want to spend a little bit of time briefly talking about inquiry and maybe you know what my views of it are as well as the views of some others and kind of how we go about defining and seeing what inquiry actually is. So I really like this position statement from the National Science Education Standards. And what it says about inquiry is that it's the diverse ways in which scientists study the natural world and propose explanations based on the evidence derived from their work. Scientific inquiry also refers to the activities through which students develop knowledge and understanding of scientific ideas, as well as understanding of how scientists study the natural world. Now, what's interesting about that is inquiry isn't just content. It, it isn't just, oh, you know this stuff. It's the how. Not only how do we get to know it, but also how do scientists, how do they think? How do they get to know it? What is it that they do to understand the process? So I'm sharing two pictures of these, and this is myself around the year 2000, and then myself you know, now maybe a year or two years ago that picture was taken. You know, hopefully, you know, thankfully you haven't aged all that poorly, but that's neither here nor there in about 18 years. When I first started teaching, my belief was that if my students understood the principles and they understood the equation, they understood the facts about the content that I was teaching, which was physics, then that means I did my job. I did what I was supposed to be doing. Now, after additional training, after spending more time in the classroom, what I realized that what's not important is the content so much, but it's understanding how we got to know the content that we got to know. I'm using the content as a medium. And so what's happening is I want to focus more on the critical thinking, those problem solving skills to get my students to really think like scientists. Because we have those colleagues or we know people who might be science teachers and say, oh, well, I do inquiry all the time. And so there's actually different levels of inquiry that we can look at. So this first one is talking about confirmation inquiry. So this is what a lot of teacher do, a lot of teachers will do when they say they're doing inquiry, but the students aren't really being active learners. You typically have a teacher who taught a particular science theme or topic, and we then go over and they give a lab in the classroom. And so the teachers direct the students through that lab and what happens is they're doing a lab that reinforces what they just learned about. So the teacher will teach a topic. Then we do a lab that reinforces and shows what they just talked about. And the teachers are all basically using it as a confirmation to show, see, I'm correct. What I just told you is what happens in the real world. I am correct. So that's a level one confirmation of inquiry where students are doing some activities, but we already know what their results are going to be. Now, level two is a structured inquiry. This is where the teacher provides an initial question and an outline of a procedure, but the students have some freedom and flexibility so that they can formulate explanations of what they're seeing based upon their findings through the evaluation and the analysis of the data that they collect. So they have to use the data that they find, which was provided with an outline from the instructor. Based upon that, the data that they get, they then need to figure out and they need to formulate an explanation of what's happening based upon the data. This is structured where the instructor provides that, that first question, they provide the outline, but they give them the freedom and flexibility from the data analysis to look at what they're doing. Now, level three is guided inquiry. 
this is where the teacher provides just the research question for the students. The students then have to come up with their own experiment. They have to follow their own procedures and they need to test that question out. So you see how at this point where in level two, the instructor provided some of the experiment, but in level three, the teacher only provides the question. Now the students need to come up with the experiment. They need to figure out how to design it. They need to look at what data they need to collect. And then they also need to think about how are they going to communicate their results? So the last one, level four is open and true inquiry. This is where students formulate their own research questions. The students come up with the question, the students come up with the experiment, they come up with the design, they come up with the procedure, they come up with their own findings and they present their own results. Now, a lot of times we call this a science fair inquiry because this is where a lot of science fair exhibits or a lot of science fair experiments where students come up with their own question, they drive their own investigations, and they share the results of what they have. Now, if we think about it, and if we look at these in different levels, you can see how as we get higher and higher in the levels that the students take more and more control over their experiments. But I also want to emphasize that we don't necessarily want to be at a level four, or level three, 100% of the time. We have our students in K through 12 for 12 years. In that amount of time, we need to teach them all of the science that we have learned in the past thousand years. It's not possible for us as an educator to be able to do a level four open true inquiry their entire career. We want to get them to be able to think this way. So don't feel like as an instructor, you have to be at a level four, level three all the time. We also, because we also need to train our students. They may not know how to create an experiment. They may not know how do I look for the data? How do I analyze the data this way? How do I make my observations? So we kind of need to train them starting off at level one and working our ways up to level two and level three and going back and forth between them. But we don't necessarily have to be at level four the entire time. We do want to do something with a level four so that it gives our students the opportunity to think about formulating their own research questions and what they want to do. So in the end, the goal is we want to get our students thinking about the data and thinking about how they set up the experiments as much as possible and providing them help when needed. Thank you, and I look forward to our next video together.